हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी स्टडीड की एलिमेंट्स ऑफ फाइबर ऑप्टिक्स कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम एंड एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ फाइबर ऑप्टिक्स केबल ऑल टेलीकम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम यूज सम फॉर्म ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक एनर्जी टू ट्रांसमिट सिग्नल द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक ईएम रेडिएशन इज शोन इन फिगर 1.2 बेसिकली इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक एनर्जी इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड्स इट इंक्लूड्स पावर रेडियो वेव्स माइक्रोवेव्स इंफ्रारेड लाइट विजिबल लाइट अल्ट्रावायलेट लाइट एक्स रेज एंड गैमा रेज एज शोन इन फिगर इच डिसिप्लिन टेक्स अप अ स्पेसिफिक पोर्शन और बैंड ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी ऑप्टिकल स्पेक्ट्रल बैंड बिफोर प्रोसीड फर्दर आई एम भाग्यश्री थोरात एंड वेलकम टू माई चैनल पिनाकल डोंट फॉर गेट टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल for such informative videos my references to prepare this video is optical communication essentials by gerd kresser edition 3rd and 4th now back to our lecture the fundamental nature of all radiation within this spectrum is that it can be viewed as electromagnetic waves that travel at the speed of light which is about c is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second in vacuum c is used to refer speed of light in vacuum and s is used to refer speed of light in material always remember that the speed of light s in a material is smaller by the refractive index factor n than the speed of light c in a vacuum for example if n is a approximately equal to 1.45 for silica glass then the speed of light in this material is about to 2 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second this is nothing but a value of x so now the next question is how to measure waves and which is correct or efficient parameter the physical properties of the waves in different parts of the spectrum can be measured in several interrelated waves there are four waves or basically three waves the first one is a wavelength wavelength is the length of a one period of the wave second we can measure energy or in a fiber optics communication system we are interested to measure photon energy the energy contained in a wave third parameter is a frequency frequency is the oscillating frequency of the waves for fiber optics it is in a tetrahertz and the last one which is we are going to use for our applications this is a spectral bands it is designated by international telecommunication union itu these bands are showing the operating signal bands used for fiber optic communication application if you observe the previous diagram optical spectrum ranges from about 5 nm in ultraviolet region to 1 mm for far infrared radiation in between these limits 400 to 700 is a visible band optical fiber communication uses near infrared spectral band ranging from nominally 770 to 1675 nm the international telecommunication union itu has designated six spectral bands for use in optical fiber communication within the 1260 to 1675 nm regions the figure shows six band first one is o band then e band then s band then c band then l band and last one is a u band this long wavelength band designation are mainly characteristics by attenuation of optical fibers and the performance behavior of an erbium dope fiber amplifier edfa figure 1.3 and table 1.1 so this is table 1.1 shows original band this is nothing but a o band spectrum 1260 to 1360 it is used for single mode fiber links and this is a original first region second band is extended band or e band spectrum 1360 nm to 1460 nm this link can extend into this region for fibers with low water content means the attenuation is low then short band 
means S band. It is 1460 to 1530. For this band, wavelengths are shorter than C band but higher than E band. Then conventional band or long band C L. C is 1530 to 1565 and L is 1565 to 1615625. This is a wavelength region used by conventional EDFA gain or EDFA decreases steadily to 1 at 1625 nm in this long wavelength band. Then ultra long band U band it is a 1625 to 1675. This region behind the response capability of EDFA amplifier. So the table defines bands which are known by the letters O E S C L and U. The 1770 to 910 nm band is used for shorter wavelength multimode fiber system. Now figure 1.4 shows the operating range of optical fiber system and the characteristics of four key components of a link. The optical fiber, light source, photo detector and optical amplifier. Here the dashed vertical lines indicates the center of three main traditional operating wavelength bands this is the first band this is the second band and this is the third band these are the traditional band first band is a 850 nm second band is a 1310 nm and third band is a 1550 nm in this diagram the dash line or this symbol is for optical sources then optical amplifier photo detectors and for photo detectors the graph is responsivity versus wavelength and the wavelength or windows are showing attenuation db per kilometer versus wavelength so we can observe this graph for fiber then optical amplifier and photo detector and optical sources also this diagram is very effective to find the interrelation between optical sources materials amplifiers and photo detectors means which material is used for this key components of optical fiber communication system this is helpful to get the information of interrelated optical transmission windows spectral band and material use for manufacturing of optical component optical fiber system which are the short wavelength region o region and c band one of the principal characteristics of optical fiber is its attenuation as a function of wavelength as shown in the figure early applications in the late 1970 made exclusive use of the 770 to 910 nm wavelength band where there was a low loss window and gallium aluminum arsenide optical sources and silicon photo detectors operating at this wavelengths are available Originally this region was referred to as first window because around 1000 nm there was a large attenuation spike due to absorption by water molecules as a result of this spike early fibers exhibits a local minimum in the attenuation curve around 850 nm by reducing the concentration of hydraulic ions and metallic impurities in the fiber material in the 1980s manufacturers could fabricate optical fiber with very low loss in the 1260 to 1675 nm region that's why afterwards we are seeing the attenuation is decreasing for 1310 and 1550 it is a 0.5 1310 it is a 2.5 it is a 1.5 and it is a 0.5 around it is a 1 db per kilometer and here it is a 2.5 this spectrum band 1260 to 1675 it's called long wavelength region but in this band still water molecules are present and there is a third order absorption spike spike remain around 1440 nm because of this spike there are two low loss windows exist second window which is known as a 1310 and third window which is centered at 1550 nm These two windows are now called the O band and C band respectively. The desire to use the low loss long wavelength regions prompted the development of indium gallium arsenide phosphate based light sources and indium gallium arsenide photo detectors. 
that can operate 1310 and 1550 nm again in addition doping optical fibers with rare earth elements such as pr parasodium so dynamy th thulium and er erbium creates optical fiber amplifier called edfa tdfa and edfa devices respectively these devices and the use of raman amplifier give a further capacity boost to high capacity long wavelength system for 1550 it's provide lowest attenuation but the signal dispersion in a standard silica fiber is larger at 1550 nm than at 1310 nm so this limitation can overcome by fiber manufacturing by creating dispersion shifted fibers for single wavelength operation it is called non zero dispersion shifted fiber for use with multiple wavelength implementation laterally this type of fiber cables are widely used and by using these cables we can increase the transmission distance of our, of fiber optic communication system i hope you are now capable to understand the interrelation of key elements of fiber optic system then material and windows which are going to use for fiber optics communication system application whenever you want to select or you want to choice the window optical source and optical amplifier detector then every time you have to refer this graph this is very important graph in this graph at the same time we can see the attenuation in optical fiber then optical source which is available then responsivity of detector and efficiency of silicon germanium and indium gallium arsenide photo detector i hope this is a very important information you have to remember whenever you want to design a fiber optic communication system thank you